friends welcome back uh, let us continue with the discussion of positive organizational scholarship we started with a discussion about some correlates of pos and we discussed about organizational resilience today i will talk about organizational virtuousness organizational virtuousness is actually a strength and excellence in its own way in terms of understanding what is right and wrong what is good and bad and organizations need to focus not only gaining more profits from the business but actually doing good to its employees and how employees also reciprocate while doing good to the organizations so organizational virtuousness is a component of positive organizational scholarship which is rooted in latin word virtus meaning strength or excellence in terms of doing good to the employees and employees in return also do good but there is no self interest so plato and aristotle described virtuousness as a desires and actions that produce personal and social good that means it is based completely on what an individual feels what if one has done good to us then how we can do good to the other person so more recently virtuousness has been described as the best of the human condition and the most ennobling behaviors or honorable behaviors and outcomes and is the excellence and essence of human kind and the highest aspiration of human beings that what exactly a person wants to be in his life irrespective of his designation irrespective of his status in the organization so this is the most ennobling behaviors that highlights at workplace so organization virtuousness in and through organizations can be manifest as an individuals activities or as collective actions and characteristics of an organization's culture or process that may enable or disable virtuous deeds here virtuous deed means good deeds that how human interactions at workplace can foster good actions which are beneficial for the community and the society now if we talk about organization virtues then many organizations also consider corporate social responsibility or citizenship behaviors or renewable systems as a part of virtuousness because they are contributing to the society but actually how it contributes to an individual's mind in terms of actions they take to do good to the others this is a thin line difference between organizational virtues and the other policies in terms of csr or ocbs so there are three key definitional attributes of organizational virtuousness that means it has three aspects to discuss that in what manner organizational virtuousness can be perceived in organizations the first is the human impact the moral goodness and social betterment human impact the structure of an organization is inherently neither virtuous nor non virtuous since it does not necessarily have intrinsic positive or negative human impact we just focus on maximizing the profits how much virtuous we are no organization is concerned about it but at this point of discussion now organizations have started thinking to make a human impact on every employee and the society so if the structure is designed specifically to perpetuate flourishing interpersonal relationships meaningful work and enhanced learning and personal development among employees then that work has a human impact on the employees so this is organizational virtuousness so the intended positive human effect of this unique structure can be illustrated based on one key aspect of virtuousness in organizations that is positive human impact in what manner all the policies are having a positive human impact on an individual so virtuousness is associated with human beings with flourishing and moral character self control resilience meaningful purpose and transcendent principles so these this is how any organization can have a human impact on an employee the other is moral goodness it is about good right and worthy of cultivation that whether such particular behavior should be fostered encouraged and reciprocated so the moral development of virtuousness is characterized by goods of first intent that is ennobling and honorable it characterizes organizations as well individuals having both moral goals and possessing ideas of goodness in terms of integrity taking the right decision so that 
the decision has a very good impact or moral impact on the organization and it is being followed in suit. And whereas the second intent includes that which is good for the sake of obtaining something else such as profit, prestige or power. So, ultimately OB professionals are going beyond first world and focusing on a new world where morality is very dominant factor in making or calling any organization to be very successful rather than focusing on profit, power and prestige. The other is social betterment. The attribute produces benefits to others regardless of reciprocity or reward. Social betterment extends beyond the mere self-interested benefit. That means the, that employees and the organizations are helping the co-workers not with an intention that there something will be returned to them because that becomes an exchange. But if anything that good has been done, the person as an employee does not expect anything in return. So, this is social betterment otherwise it becomes that action becomes an exchange. So, virtuousness refers to behaviors that extend beyond expected customary or instrumental motivation such as corporate social responsibility, OCB or sponsoring environmentally friendly programs or utilizing renewable sources. Because ultimately when we are talking about uh, corporate social responsibility or OCBs, the aim is that productivity should increase. More customers should be attracted to the company based on their CSR policies and citizenship patterns of behavior. But we are talking about virtuousness, then actually it is beyond that we are not expecting anything in return and benefit to others irrespective of reciprocity. So, this is about the three definitional attributes of virtuousness that is human impact, moral goodness and social betterment. Next comes the amplifying and buffering attributes of virtuousness. So, here um, amplifying means that what it adds on, what it fosters, what it how it escalates right and what it buffers is to what extent it reduces the negativity of the environment. So, when we are talking about the two key attributes of virtuousness, we can help in terms of two types of results that are the obvious results of virtuousness. The first is it is amplifying qualities which can foster escalating positive consequences. It is always when we are doing good then the outcome is also good. So, we can provide an amplifying effect because of its association with three outcomes that is positive emotions, social capital and pro-social behavior. That means virtuousness actually amplifies positive emotions social capital and pro-social behavior. Doing good fosters good only. So, virtuous behavior produces positive emotions such as compassion, optimism, joy and there is replication of virtuousness and an elevation in positive well-being. There is positive spiral. So, this leads to create upward spirals of positive feelings and when organization members observe compassion, love or witness forgiveness. They increase their pride in the organization, enjoyment at work and satisfaction with the job and thereby they experience empathy, verve, zest and enthusiasm. This is something that we feel intrinsically, it is something which is not explicit, but when it is done to us in form of good behaviors, we emulate, we execute these positive feelings and we try to capitalize on these feelings in terms of good behavior that is beyond the sine qua non of managerial success and organizational excellence. It not leads to organizational success, it actually leads to personal excellence. Thus, amplifying quality of virtuousness and positive effect is similar to the heliotropic effect. Heliotropic effect means here that any organization where the environment is life giving, where there is more positive energy members or employees are also attracted towards the same energy and reflect the same life giving energy to the organization. I gave a very simple example in a previous discussion about sunflower that how a sunflower directs towards sunlight, receives positive light or life giving energy from the sunlight and sunflower also gives the same energy 
to the environment. So, this is how there is a positive spiral. So, it is a heliotropic effect life giving energy to each other and this is manifested tendency towards that which are positive and away from that which is negative and so experiencing virtuousness produces a self reinforcing effect doing good and feeling good and then doing good. So, it is a self reinforcing effect that we are away from the negative and we are way towards the positive. So, this is the positive emotion element when we are talking about the amplifying qualities of organizational virtuousness. The second is the social capital. Here social capital means not only about interpersonal relationships, what we feel as an employee out of those interrelationship in terms of caregiving, in terms of trust, in terms of empathy. We have good relationship with every employee, but what we feel, what we get out of that interpersonal relationship that is the social capital in terms of caregiving, in terms of respect, in terms of empathy, in terms of trust and that builds high quality relationship among organization members. So, there is more freedom to exchange ideas and opinions, there is more flow in the communication of information, the experiences are positive, full of positive energy and there is a desire to strengthen the relationship because there is a fear for not losing any good relationship and exchange more valued resources. So, here the valued resources are empathy, caregiving, uh, respect and trust. Hence, organizational virtuousness enhances social capital and in turn organizational performance. Initially, it was policies and procedures to organizational performance. Now, it is that what a person feels intrinsically at workplace and how it enhances performance. So, this POS is a mediating factor in certain situations. So, social capital in organizations reduces transaction cost, facilitates communication and cooperation, enhances commitment, fosters individual learning, strengthens relationship and involvement and ultimately enhances organizational performance. And members of the organization experience a compelling urge to join with and build upon the contributions of these others. In other words, it is that when they feel good, the members also try to reciprocate while doing good to the others while not expecting anything in return. So, there is a human connection and a spiral virtuous actions that are being fostered at the workplace. Pro-social behavior, virtuous fosters, virtuousness fosters pro-social behavior that means to benefit other people. People have some genetic impulse to help others they will not think that what will be the outcome of helping them, but genetically they become so impulsive to help the other person. That is actually a pro-social behavior. They will not expect anything from the other person. So, this is pro-social behavior. It is explained as being motivated by an exchange relationship, reciprocity or equity in which individuals attempt to reciprocate to those who benefit from them. That is an exchange altruism that you are helping and you will get something in return. But when it comes to pro-social behavior, then it is about internal definitions of goodness and intrinsic motivation towards helping others among other factors. Among other factors means no matter what factors will influence exchange or not exchange, but actually factors that genetically influence or makes the other person impulsive to be more helpful towards the other person. So, evidence on impulse helping suggests that individuals may be genetically disposed to engage in impulsive acts of helping and behaving virtuously towards others. That means, while being highly benevolent, extremely forgiving and generous, regardless of personal reward and aside from establishing a condition of equitable exchange appears to be innate. Such experiencing Virtuousness helps unlock human predisposition towards behaving in ways that benefit others and the falling spirals of positive effect tend to flow from virtuous behavior. That means, people follow suit that one person is doing good, then I should also do the good. This way, it expands to the every section of the organization and there are more positive impact, 
more social, more human and more moralistic impact on people which tend to identify any organization as a virtuous organization. And there are instances when employees experience such or exhibit such kind of virtuousness that they have high commitment to stay connected to that organization. The other is the buffering qualities of organizational virtuousness that is protecting the organization against the negative consequences. Negativity will be there, adversity will be there. We can reduce the chances that adversity should not occur. So, these are the buffering qualities of organizational virtuousness that is to escape from the negative effects of downsizing by enhancing resiliency, solidarity and sense of efficacy. Now, here downsizing is in terms of diminished social capital, diminished commitment, diminished relational capital. So, at the group and organizational levels, virtuousness enhances the ability to absorb threats and trauma and bounce back from adversity. That means, they become more adaptive, which we have already used this term, the adaptive aspect and serves as a source of resilience and toughness helping to preserve social capital and collective efficacy. Here the idea is that when we are talking about organizational virtuousness and in the times of adversity, how individual and group members tend to preserve social capital and collective efficacy of the group and the organization while becoming more highly resilient. Because any extraneous stimuli or any situation can hamper the composition or the structure of the group or the organization. To protect the group from these kind of uh, adversities, group members become more cohesive to protect the collective efficacy and the social capital of the organization while becoming more resilient. So, while being more resiliency, we can reduce or buffer the negative impact of any adverse situation. Thus, virtuousness help foster strengthening, replenishing and limbering processes that create group and organizational resilience. Now, here the strengthening means to become more robust, replenishing means to, to renew the process to avoid or reduce the effect or buffer the effect of negativity and limbering that warming up the organization at different levels or prepare them to face the challenges. So, virtuousness strengthens organizations by providing a clear representation of what is desirable, aspirational and honorable in the organization. For example, while protecting the image of the organization for not being tarnished. So, doing good and receiving good will help to maintain the strength of the organization. These, these become later on in long run as the working standards of the organization while straining the members. This virtue serve as a fixed point in a sea of change. For instance, fixed point of that we have to maintain a fixed level, a fixed point that we will not fall below that point. They create a benchmark. They have a mark that where they have to maintain that kind of ennobled behavior to receive that respect or maintain the respect of the organization. For instance, all navigators require a standard or a benchmark that does not change in order to steer a plane, a ship or an organization. There has to be a standard which has to be maintained to overcome the adversity and at the same time to maintain the quality of the performance of the employees and at the same time the social and relational capital. So, thus helping organizations maintain the capability to effectively steer their way through conditions of unpredictable changes. That is no matter how much adversity any organization would experience, but they will function at a particular level or raise their bars beyond that bench marking. The other is that it helps replenish or renew organizations through association with positive effect, social capital and pro-social activity. It is a matter of being highly cohesive while being so reciprocal in their nature that even if they observe and experience positive energy, then they also reciprocate in the same way. They are renewed in their behavioral patterns and it enhances the human capital needed to capably absorb or recover from damage. That means, 
the psychological support that members receive from each other during the adversity, the, during the times of adversity that renews the organization's association with positive effect. Already members are connected to each other, they are highly cohesive, but during adversity, at the time of adversity, they exclude more positive effect so that members become more resilient and adaptable to new changes. And virtuousness also helps limber the organization while increasing the capacity to respond adaptively to unanticipated and potentially damaging situations by enhancing relational coordination. When the more relational and social capital is being generated, then there is another kind of process that initiates within, within the organization that they warm up the members in a way or they it is a retreat for a member based on the positive experiences that they receive from the uh, organization during crisis and how they renew their psychological forces to overcome that adversity. So, organization reinforce these buffering elements through a variety of process and structures including open communication, empowered and cohesive girl groups, conducive reward and recognition, clear statements of value and vision and opportunities for interpersonal interaction. Now, that means these positive effects can only be experienced when the process is very much reinforced in a way that buffers negative effect and fosters positive effect through proper or positive structural process. So, this process and structures help facilitate the development of virtuousness and hence the capacity to overcome the deleterious effects of downsizing namely the destruction of the relationship, trust, loyalty, information sharing, teamwork and escalation of deception, rigidity, conflict and vindictiveness. Here in organizational virtuousness point of view, here downsizing does not refers to any downsizing in terms of financial losses or turnover increase in turnover intentions. It is about social, relational and human capital, downsizing of social, relational and human capital. So, we can conclude that virtuousness in organizations represents a set of activities, values, emotions and consequences that are positively deviant. It focuses on ennobling and uplifting aspects of the human condition more than achieving effectiveness and profitability. That is not the focus of organizational virtuousness or POS that the focus is on effectiveness and profitability. It is more focused on human, social and relational capital or aspect of organizations. Virtuousness is intrinsically motivated and it is oriented towards betterment of human beings who are employees at one point and extend beyond the immediate concerns of self interest. That means organizational virtuousness under the umbrella term that is POS, then it actually thinks about beyond going the self interest and most importantly focusing on its impact on humans. It investigates the positive life giving virtuous aspects of organizations an important area of study which is an important area of study for organizational scholars and requires more researches to identify that what behaviors can be enabled at workplace which makes employees first of all as human and organizations also contribute to the betterment of employees in transforming them or transcending them as real humans. So, we are through with this discussion. I will continue the same module in the next session. Thank you.